Hey everyone, it's Molly and Laura from Team Outright here. Thank you all so much for joining our webinar called Tips from an Expert to Get You Started on Fulfillment by Amazon. We're really excited to welcome our FBA expert, Kat Simpson. Before we get started, I want to just talk about a couple of logistical things. If you have any technical issues at any point, please type them into the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll try to get those addressed for you. We'll have some questions um, at the end, and I'm sure we'll have some throughout the presentation. So if at any point you think of them during the webinar, please don't hesitate to type them into the question box, and we'll try to get them answered as soon as possible. And if we can't have time to do it right away, we'll go ahead and do them at the end. Uh, finally, we'll make this presentation available after the webinar, so you can go back um, and look at it for your reference. So let's get started. Welcome, Kat. Kat is the founder of retailer Cat's Closet, LLC, the producer of FBA Radio, and director of That Cat, a consulting firm that helps clients maximize social media tools. And today, Kat is going to talk about the benefits and challenges of signing up for FBA, how and why it works, and how to make it work for your business. So without any further ado, here's Kat. Hey guys, I'm excited to be here. I hope you can let me know when you see my screen and we'll get started. I will show it and it's bright and purple. So you guys have to tell me if you can see it or not. I think we may have a little, yeah, there we go. Can you see that bright purple screen? Can you see my screen? We can see it here. All right. Okay, we're good. Okay, this is uh, Amazon FBA Beginnings. So I wanted to address this screenshot mainly to folks who have heard about Amazon FBA and are curious about it, or maybe just want to know what it's all about. So just to get started, how many people here in the audience have ever bought something on Amazon? If you've bought something on Amazon, if you look over near your uh, over there to your uh, right on the screen, you should have a little hand and you can actually raise that hand. Can you raise that hand for me and let me know if you have ever bought something on Amazon? Ladies, can you let me know if anybody's bought something here? Sure, we've got lots of hands going up, Kat. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, eight, seven, great. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> almost everyone's okay, so everybody hand. knows what Amazon is. We won't have to cover all that. Let me just go on a little bit. We've got lots to talk about today. This webinar, like the girl said, is going to be about 30, 45 minutes long, and I'll stay for the 15 minutes after and answer as many questions as I can. You will be getting a, a link to the replay, so we're all good there. If you uh, miss some of it here, don't worry about that. Uh, who am I? Who is Kat Simpson? I think a lot of people here already know, but in case you haven't, I've been around for a long time. I'm a grandma. Uh, I've been selling on eBay since Beanie Baby days. I think a lot of you probably remember those. I've had a lot of sales on eBay. I have 12,000 feedbacks on eBay. I'm a TRS. But I've moved to Amazon as a primary channel over the last year and a half. I started on Amazon back in 2004, but I kind of played around with it. In 2010 and 2011, I really got involved with Amazon, and I've currently sold over 5,000 units there. My Amazon sales are already over 100K. My average sale on Amazon is $28, and that's an important figure. For those of you who have sold on eBay, you know that we always aim for a little bit of a higher number uh, because as you go higher, then the fees take less of a bite out of your present, out of your uh, cost. I've sold over $30,000 in quarter four on Amazon, and I know you guys know what quarter four is, but in case you don't, that's when Christmas comes. <laughs> so there's a lot of holidays in Q4, and everyone's sales go through the roof. The goal of this webinar is to give you enough information so that if you'd like to take part in the wonderful Q4 on Amazon, you'll be ready at the end of this webinar. The keys to understanding my kind of teaching, everything I teach, I want you to understand how and why. So please, Molly is going to interrupt me whenever we have a good question, and I would love to help you understand. This webinar is supposed to be interactive. I know you don't want to hear me talk for 20 minutes, although don't. Don't question that because I could definitely go on for 20, 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> but I'd rather hear your questions and be more in tune with what you want to know. Just put your questions in the question and answer box or in the chat, and Molly will get them to me as soon as we can. This is the webinar agenda for today's class. We're going to be uh, talking about what's driving Amazon success. Since most of you on the webinar have purchased from Amazon, you know that Amazon is successful. Let's talk about why they're successful and a few numbers to show you how successful they are. 
I want to talk a lot. This is going to be a big point here is understanding Amazon FBA and the Amazon Prime customer. Every e-commerce guru will tell you that if you want to sell products, you've got to know who your customer is. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about the mind of an FBA customer and how you can sell to them. We're going to touch a little bit on some rules that Amazon has on their website, different types of Amazon accounts, all the different Amazon product categories, and then we're going to hit kind of heavy again on sourcing products for FBA because everybody wants to know, hey, uh, where do I get stuff to sell on FBA? And then we're also going to tell about, talk to you about how you send your products into FBA. That's an easy part. And then we'll go to summary and next steps and your questions. So have I lost anybody yet? Of all those people that have sold on Amazon, how many of you have actually bought, have actually bought something on Amazon? How many of you have sold something on Amazon? So I, we, we've already accomplished that almost everybody on the webinar has bought something from Amazon. Has anybody here already sold products on Amazon? Can you raise your hand and let me know about that? We've got six. Molly, do we have some Amazon yeah, sellers? We do. Six, seven, eight. That's about eight, eight of them. Oh, well, that's awesome. Well, I may have a more advanced uh, audience than I thought. So you guys, if I'm going too slow, type it in the chat room. Yeah, we already know this stuff, Kat. Move on. <laughs> and put your questions in there because I really would like this to be uh, helpful to all of you. What is driving Amazon success? Before we talk about getting you on Amazon, I want you to understand why you want to be there. I know that everybody reads the paper because we're entrepreneurs and we stay in touch, either Drudge Report or the, the basic hometown newspaper or CNN something. We keep on touch with the news and everyone knows that we're having an economic slowdown. Everyone that is except Amazon. They don't seem to have caught in that message. Amazon sales have not slowed down. In fact, the Q4, that wonderful magic quarter, the fourth quarter, their sales last year were $17.43 billion. Yes, that's billion with a B, not million. And if you notice the other important number up there on the slide, that's up 35% year over year. That means that even in the middle of this economic depression, recession, whatever you want to call it, Amazon raised their total sales by 35% over the last quarter of four. Amazon has, doesn't release a lot of numbers. They're very tight-lipped about their figures, but we were able to determine that there are over 121 million customers on Amazon. Now, to encourage you, that $17.43 billion, here's how you can get yours. Third-party sellers on Amazon, that's you and that's me, make up over 38% of Amazon's total revenue. That means 38% of that $17.43 billion was sold by us. So I think it's time for you guys to get your share. And remember, we are the 38%. What is driving Amazon success? Well, number one, every single thing that Amazon does is based on providing a great customer experience. And those of you who are experienced on eBay, you are probably tired of that phrase, a great customer experience. But Amazon's entire platform, marketing, and rule base is on that particular point. They will make rules for their sellers specifically to, to, to protect their buyers. Amazon is known for their buyer protection. Uh, they don't have to, to uh, market it too hard. Everyone knows if I buy from Amazon and I don't get what I want or I don't get it on time, Amazon will take care of me. That is the perception in the public's mind, and that is what is behind their success. Amazon's third-party marketplace, that's you and me, is organized, standard, and consistent. Remind you of any other online marketplace? Maybe not. Amazon is extremely careful in who they allow to sell on their platform. Uh, their seller policies ensure that only sellers who live up to their highest ideals will succeed on the marketplace. I don't want you to be frightened, but Amazon uh, is not eBay. Uh, eBay, when you make a mistake and have a problem, typically you get a warning or you get contacted and say, hey, we're going to you know, suspend you for five days, or we're going to not let you list new items for 30 days. On Amazon, it doesn't work like that. You know, the old question is that, you know, or the old quote is they, they shoot first and ask questions later. Well, let me explain to you that Amazon just shoots. They don't ask questions. <laughs> so I know that may sound harsh, and don't let it frighten you, because all you have to do is know the rules and abide by them. But don't go rushing over to Amazon and jump in there without knowing the rules. It is not a place to ask for forgiveness. Uh, you have to know the rules ahead of time. 
The most important part of this presentation in my mind and the one I want to spend the most time on, so please, please ask your questions here. You need to understand the Amazon customer. As we spoke earlier about what's driving the Amazon success, their incredible dedication to customer service and customer experience, that is what created this great pool of customers called the Amazon customers. Amazon customers are extremely loyal. They don't go to google.com and type in what they want to buy. They don't go to the latest comparison and shopping engine um, trying to think of the find. They don't go to the find and type in what they want to buy. No, they go to amazon.com and they start their shopping there. These customers trust Amazon, prefer Amazon, and they would rather buy at Amazon even if they pay a higher price. These are wonderful customers to sell to because they don't want a lot of hand-holding. They don't need a lot of customer service. They want to buy their item and get back to their life. Anybody here not want those kind of customers, please raise your hand and send me your email address and I'll take those off your hands, okay? <laughs> if you don't want a customer that doesn't require a lot of hand-holding. Amazon's customers are amazing, but there's a subset of Amazon customers that's even more valuable to you and I, and this is the Amazon Prime customer. Now, for anybody out there who hasn't heard of Amazon Prime, or whatever rock you have been uh, living under, Amazon Prime is a program by which you join and pay a $79 membership fee per year. And of course, there are you know coupons all over the internet and free memberships for students and moms and things like that. But basically, it's $79 per household. That means everyone in your household. And the benefit is that every item you buy from Amazon ships for free with two-day shipping. You also get the benefit of being able to upgrade your shipping for overnight shipping for $3.99. So let's say you live in Florida like I do, and suddenly there's a hurricane out in the Gulf headed right towards you. And you just know you're going to be without power again for a week. Well, you just dial up your trusty computer, go to Amazon.com, find that wonderful generator that you've been meaning to get a hold of, and oh my goodness, the hurricane's hitting in three days, no problem. Amazon, for $3.99, will deliver that generator to your home overnight. Now, I know, it's kind of amazing. You can have a refrigerator or a generator or a mattress delivered overnight for $3.99, but you can. Also, the free shipping creates customers who will buy everything at Amazon. Imagine if you didn't have to consider the shipping cost and you needed a ream of paper, a specialty kind of paper for some invitations you wanted to put out. If you don't have to worry about shipping, why get in the car and drive downtown and search three stores to find it? Just pull up Amazon and order that ream there. It's delivered in two days. And now Amazon is moving with more warehouses and more abundance of uh, items into almost one day shipping. So Amazon Prime is extremely powerful. In fact, 50% of Amazon customers on Prime have never, ever purchased from a third-party seller that doesn't use FBA. That means those of you who are selling on Amazon but shipping your items yourself, 50% of the Amazon customers won't even look at your items. They want their items shipped from Amazon. And as an FBA seller, my items are shipped from Amazon, and yours can be too. You are now eligible, if you sign up for the Amazon FBA program, to sell to Amazon's best customers. By signing up for FBA, you can reach customers that your competition simply cannot reach any other way. Understanding the Amazon Prime customer is crucial to making your business the most profitable it can be on Amazon FBA. Amazon Prime is Amazon's best customers, and these are the ones you're going to target when you start your FBA business. As of September 2011, there were 5 million Prime members. And just so you know, that's constantly growing. That's 20% year-over-year growth. Uh, those of you who follow the e-commerce news, there was a blog that came out and claimed there were 10 million Prime customers. Now, as I said, Amazon keeps their figures kind of close to the vest, so they don't actually re release this information. This was something that a couple of uh, bloggers with some uh, research behind them went and put out there. And then there was a big retraction about a, a two weeks later that came out and said, oh, no, 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 it's not anywhere near 10 million. It's closer to 5 million. So whether it's 5 million or 10 million, it's growing at 20% year over year. I think you want to be here and sell to these customers. Some very interesting statistics that people were able to ferret out of the Amazon database. Once a member joins Prime, 
their membership revenue, that means their gross amount of items they purchase from Amazon, grows from $400 a year to $900 a year. That's kind of easy to understand, isn't it? Because with that, if you're not paying shipping, you're buying more stuff from Amazon. Prime members spend 130% more than a regular Amazon customer. Prime only composes 4% of Amazon, but 20% of Amazon's most active buyers. If you decide to sign up for the Amazon FBA program, and believe it or not, I am not an affiliate for Amazon FBA. <laughs> I get nothing from Amazon to tell you how wonderful this program is. I just have made a lot of money from my own business and my own family, and I like to share the opportunity. These are the clients you are going to be able to sell for as soon as you sign up for FBA. So basically, FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon, is a fulfillment service. Fulfillment services are nothing new. They've been around for years and years and years. Uh, people hire them uh, when, back in the day when they had mail order catalogs. And all a fulfillment center does is they warehouse your products. And when you get an order from your customer, they ship them to the customers. With FBA, it's a little bit more than your typical fulfillment service because of Amazon Prime. You could hire any other fulfillment company to fulfill your Amazon orders and you would get the benefits of the outsourced shipping and the outsourced storage but you would not get the benefits of access to Amazon's Prime customers, and that's what you want. So very, very simply with Amazon FBA, number one, you send your products into the Amazon warehouses. Number two, Amazon stores your products. Number three, customers purchase your products from Amazon.com. Number four, Amazon picks and packs your products. And number five, Amazon ships the products to your customers. In addition to this, Amazon handles 99% of my customer service with my Amazon FBA business. And what I mean by that is it is very uncommon to get an email from an FBA customer, uh, but when I do, most of those emails are answered by the Amazon customer service. I don't even have to deal with them. Um, returns are handled 98% of the time straight through the Amazon customer service interface and I never have to deal with them. So not only are you outsourcing all of your shipping, you are also outsourcing about 99% of your customer service emails and about 98% of your returns that you have to deal with uh, the customer service issues. What are the benefits for you signing up for FBA? Well, I already told you about the Amazon Prime customers. And for those of you who get those customers every once in a while, and we all get them in e-commerce or in retail of any kind, you'll be happy to know that the Amazon customers, generally speaking, are a much easier lot to deal with. They are not price conscious, and they want their item, and they want to be left alone. They won't be bothering you. But in addition to having the uh, access to that wonderful customer base, there's a lot of other benefits to selling with FBA. Number one is lowering your shipping costs. Now that may seem counterintuitive because now I'm shipping my items to a warehouse and then the warehouse is shipping them to the customers. But here's how you save. Number one, your customers pay the shipping for all the Amazon items. If it's a free shipping item, Amazon bears that shipping cost, not you the merchant. It's not a problem. Number two, when you ship your items into FBA, you are allowed to use the Amazon partnered UPS rate. Now, I know that eBay has garnered a really good rate for eBay merchants, and that's not a bad one, but I'm telling you the Amazon rate is going to blow you away. If you've done any type of Amazon UPS or any kind of UPS shipping at all, uh, if you've shipped a package to your family across country or to a customer, you, when you ship your first Amazon box, you're going to be blown away. My savings from what I would normally pay is between 50 and 65%. Uh, I can ship a 50-pound box for, it costs between $6 and $14. Depends on where it's going and how big the box is. Uh, it is absolutely astonishing. If you think about it, Amazon is one of the best customers for UPS, so of course they get some of the best rates. So it only makes sense. Uh, the second benefit for you as an FBA merchant is you have premier seller positioning. This is kind of what I alluded to earlier when I talked about the Amazon Prime customers because these customers are not price conscious. Um, I know that on eBay when I sell there, typically the buyers are very, very interested in getting the lowest cost price. They're very upset if I charge for shipping. It's a real price conscious marketplace right now. 
Amazon is not generally speaking that way. Now there's always exceptions, of course, but I'm speaking in generalities. The Amazon customers are not price sensitive. You can charge a higher price. For instance, I just sold a, a doll the other day and there were several others for sale of this doll on Amazon and they were merchant fulfilled sellers and they were charging about $15 for the doll and about $9 for shipping, so $24. My doll sold for $36. Now that doesn't even make sense, does it? Because they could have bought it from Sally and paid her $15 for the doll and $9 for shipping, which if you can add, that's $24. But instead they chose to pay me $36. Why would they do that? Because my doll was shipped from Amazon. They don't have to deal with me. They don't want to deal with me. They want to deal with Amazon. They know the doll is going to come to them in an Amazon box. They know if they don't like it or they change their mind or it's damaged in some way, they can pick up the phone or dry up an email. And just that fast, Amazon will fix the problem for them. So that's why they'd rather pay me $12 more for my doll. Uh, the other benefits, you work smarter, not harder. If that, when, in my teaching, whenever I teach people who are selling on eBay or Bonanza or any other marketplaces and we talk about how busy they are and how they need to find more time in their day and I say, okay, what's the one job that you would be able to give off to somebody else and have somebody else do for you? What do you think it is, Molly, for 98% of the people that I ask, what job would you like to give up first? Any ideas? I don't know. We're <laughs> here. <laughs> it's, it's automatically... They want to get rid of shipping, right? Yeah, that, that makes sense. That's probably what I would want to get rid of. I think that Absolutely. I mean, who wants to pack boxes all day, right? That's a $7 an hour job. You don't want to do that. So most of the time when somebody's wanting to grow their business, the first place they go is shipping. When you hire FBA, not only have you outsourced your shipping, you've outsourced your storage. No more storage units. You can get to see your dining room table for the first time in six years. Yay. No more picking the package. Oh, where did I put that? I know I just saw that the other day. And very little customer service and returns. I won't say zero because you do occasionally get an email from an FBA customer and occasionally you have to help them through figuring out how to do a return. But it's very, very rare. 98, 99% of the time Amazon handles all of that. So all of that time, imagine if you had all of that time back. All the time you spend looking for items that just sold and you can't find them. All the time you spent packing those 10 boxes that went out today or 50 that went out last week, all of that time back in your day, how much more sourcing could you do to grow your business? Just planting that seed there. Okay, number four benefit for FBA, you keep your customers happy. And people say, well, what does this have to do with FBA? It's very interesting. If you go to a Google map and you try to look up the location of almost any Amazon warehouse in the United States, they are almost without a exception on the same block or even next door to the UPS sorting center. Isn't that interesting? Maybe they know something, huh? <laughs> they build these huge warehouses as close as they can get them to the UPS sorting center in that town. And by doing that, when Amazon ships a package, it is out of there just like that. They don't have to wait for me to set up a meeting with the UPS driver and hope he comes by when he's supposed to. They don't have to wait for me to get down and drive down to the UPS store. The UPS trucks are there eight, nine, 10 times a day. So your customers with FBA are going to be astounded at how fast the shipping comes. In fact, as I said before, they come to expect it. And that's why they don't want to buy from a merchant fulfilled buy seller. They want to buy from Amazon. Hey, Kat, I can. Uh, this I is can, the last. I was yep. just going to say, I can, I can attest to that. I've noticed every time I do that, it's always early. And <laughs> I love that about, about Amazon. It's fantastic. Well, you know, a newsletter just came out the other day, Molly, and they are moving towards one day delivery. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with the seller boards and people discussing on Amazon. Amazon is moving our merchandise around, you know, having us send five of them to this warehouse and five of them to that warehouse. What's the point of all that? Amazon is trying to get to where they can deliver 90% of their items in one day. Isn't that awesome? It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, did I order that yesterday? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> The last point on this slide is scalability. And I, I hate that I put it last, but I put it last because it, to me it's the biggest. Every one person business out there has a limit of time and space, okay? Your limits are your 24 hours in the day. Your limits are wherever you're living. 
I lived in a 600 square foot apartment. I'm now living with other families. So we have two families in the same house. Other people have have a 3,400 square foot house and a two car garage, that's great. But eventually you run out of space. Amazon FBA eliminates that problem. No more trying to find your dinner table at dinner time. No more having, you can actually have a guest bedroom again. I mean, I know most eBay online sellers do not have a guest bedroom because it's, you know, stock, it's inventory. <laughs> but with FBA, you can actually have a guest bedroom again. Uh, their space is your space. And these warehouses, I talk about the Amazon warehouses, we're not talking about like a Sam's Club or a Costco. We're talking about five football field size warehouses, okay? It takes 10 minutes in a golf cart to get from one side to the other. If you want to imagine how big these warehouses are, go on YouTube and Google Amazon warehouse. They're absolutely humongous. So that's their space is now your space and you're gonna rent it from them at pennies on the dollar. I have over 3,000 SKUs in storage at Amazon. My storage fees last month were $70. I couldn't rent a five by five foot storage unit here in my town for $75 a month, okay? The average storage fee for a book is three cents, three pennies. So your time and space, your space limitation just went away when you sign up for FBA. Your time limitation is gonna be greatly increased because no more packing and shipping, no more picking the item and trying to find it. All of that time can now be spent on other lucrative activities. All right, that's why I wanted to hit that really hard. The strengths of Amazon for sellers. We'll do strengths and weaknesses so you can decide if this is for you. Actually, hey, on can, do you mind yes. interrupt you for one second? Um, Please do. Star had a question. Um, can you clarify that, that three cents? Is that three cents per month back on your last slide? Yes, uh, Amazon storage fees are spelled out very clearly on their site, um, and they're all based on size, the square footage of the size. So it's the average size book costs an average of three cents a month. Okay, great. Okay? So 36 cents a year for a book. Okay? That's great, thanks. All right, no problem. But please keep sending those in because that helps me. Next time I know I need to show you guys storage fees better. <laughs> I'm making a note. Thank you for that question. Um, the storage fees are extremely low, much lower than what you'd pay here. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, long-term storage fee that's coming up in August. Long-term storage fee is only for items you have more than one SKU of. And so that's really nothing to worry about as long as you watch your inventory. And we can do that more in Q&A too. All right, strengths and weaknesses of Amazon because Amazon may not be the marketplace for you. I do not think it's the panacea. I just think it's a great opportunity you should look into. Easier to list. Now, the reason I say that Amazon's easier to list is because when you have a product that is already in Amazon's catalog, it takes you literally seconds to list that product. All you do is go to the add inventory page on your Amazon account type in the UPC code, Amazon will bring up the product match. You verify that yes, that's exactly the product, product I'm selling and hit the sell yours button, fill in a couple things, your seller SKU, your price, the condition of your item and hit sell and you're done. That is for items that are already in the Amazon catalog. Now Amazon has 10 million, you got that right, 10 million product pages. So the chances are pretty good your product is in there. So if your product is in the Amazon inventory, it's really fast to list it than other sites like Bonanza and some of the others where you have to put a lot more information in. Uh, it's a flat commission, no listing fees. Um, think about it as throwing out a net. When you have to pay any site at all, uh, eBay, Bonanza, um, uh, Attaway, any, when you have to pay any site to list your items, a penny a piece, a nickel a piece, a dime a piece, 35 cents a piece, you have to be careful how many items you throw out there because you're paying that fee on every item, no matter if it sells or not. On Amazon, there are no listing fees. That means you can throw your net much wider because you're only going to pay those fees on items that sell. And that's what Amazon selling has an advantage there. Hey, the Kat. commissions are spelled out. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, it's okay. Go ahead and you finish that thought and then okay. I'll, I'll let you know I have another question for you. Great, I love the questions. The Amazon fees are spread out, and I, the reason I didn't bring them here to show you, and I, I guess I'll bring a chart next time, is because they're different in every category. So like in baby, it might be 12%, and in electronics, it might be 
And those are examples. I don't have the facts right in front of me right now, but the, the category, the listing fees or the selling fees, the commissions are different in the categories. What was the question, Molly? Yeah, um, this is going back to what you said a couple minutes ago. Mark asked, if you go to one day shipping, then we will increase our shipping by having to send smaller quantities to several distribution centers. Is this correct? Yes, actually, Mark, that's been what's been going on around lately. As, uh, as Amazon shifts the inventory around, it used to be you could put 100 items in one box and ship it to one distribution center. Now you're more likely to have to split that into three boxes with 30 items each and ship them to three different distribution centers. Does that affect your cost? Absolutely. I still feel it affects the cost minutely because if you're sending a box with five things in it, you're going to have a higher cost per item on your shipping. And I don't, I try real hard not to do that. I would like to have at least 25 or 30 items in a box before I send it. But you, it always, always, always comes back to margins. If you protect your margins when you buy and make sure you have enough in there for that shipping, then you're covered. Uh, you just, you have to know ahead of time. In my mind, it's 50 cents per item or a dollar for big items. In my mind, that's what I figure when I'm buying something. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pay 50 cents to a dollar to ship this in. So let's make sure that I'm still going to make plenty of money back. Okay? And, that, and Kat, thank you very much for that answer. That was great. Uh, Char cool. wants to know if at some point in this uh, webinar, you're going to be covering restricted categories. Yes, if we get there fast enough. Great, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Charlene, because you're right. I don't want people to think they can list anything. You can't. I'll speed up, but please, Molly, just grab me, yell at me, because I'm used to that. I got Great. children. They always we like, we like it uh, that it's so engaged. It's, a, it's fantastic. I, well, I love that, because I, I want to answer the questions that are there. So I'll go through my stuff fast, and that way what they need to know we can get on. Okay, better prices, already covered this to death. I can charge more, $36 for my doll versus your doll for $24, because I'm FBA. Uh, better customers, in my opinion, because they are not nearly as picky as the other customers I've had in the past from other marketplaces. And the fulfillment by Amazon program. Okay, weaknesses. Now, some of these weaknesses, I'm not sure I consider weaknesses, but I'm going to put them out there because I want to show the good and the bad. I do think that Amazon makes it a little harder to list one-of-a-kind items than, say, eBay or Bonanza. Um, if the item is not in the Amazon catalog, then you have to create a listing for it. Um, I don't think it takes that long, maybe a couple of minutes, five minutes, probably 30 minutes for your first one, but you'll get it down to five or 10 minutes after that. But you have to take a picture. You have to make sure it's in the right category. If it doesn't have a UPC code, in some categories, you'll have to buy a UPC code. So that is a weakness. It's a little harder to list one-of-a-kind unique items. Um, in my opinion, Amazon is not yet a collectibles market. I do know a couple people that are doing very well. I know one of my friends has been selling uh, depression glass on Amazon and getting really good prices. Another gentleman I know sells things like ads out of magazines and rooster feathers of some kind. I don't even know. <laughs> but he sells them on Amazon and does well. But overall, the customers are not realizing yet that these items are on Amazon. So the sales are there. They're just not as high as the commodity items in my experience. Um, now, I love this because somebody told me to put this down as a, as a weakness, but in my opinion, it's a strength. Limited customer interaction. Now, there's, it's a good and a bad. I'll show you both sides of it. The good is I don't have all that customer service to do like I used to. So I can devote more time to what I want to do, blogging, my family, writing, doing webinars, whatever, sourcing more products. The other side of that coin is Amazon is not, let me make this very, very clear, Amazon is not a customer acquisition channel, okay? That is a negative. You are not, now I, I'm going to speak in absolutes, and we all know there's no absolutes. In some places I've been known as the depends lady because everything depends. Um, but generally speaking, you are not going to get customers to your brand through selling on Amazon. You are not allowed to contact the customer off the site. You are not allowed to include marketing materials in your packages. Uh, Amazon is very, very clear on that, and they will suspend you, and it will not be for five days. It will be for life. You cannot use Amazon as a customer acquisition channel. I cannot be clear enough with that. If somebody happens to be smart enough to realize that um, Cogswell is my business name, and if they go to cogswell.com, they might find me. They could do that on their own without my, my help. They could do that, but that's really rare. If you're going to sell on Amazon, especially on Amazon FBA, accept that you are there to make the money on the products, not to build a long-term customer list, okay? Did I make that clear enough? 
Uh, another weakness for some people is Amazon does not have auctions. So if your items are better suited to an auction than to a fixed price listing, then you won't be able to do that on Amazon. So that's a weakness. Uh, the triple win in Amazon for me, higher payouts. FBA sellers charge more, so they net more per sale, even after the FBA fees. And yes, there are FBA fees. I do not hide that at all. Amazon's fees are, in my mind, comparable. If you add eBay's fees and PayPal fees together, you are getting very close to FBA fees. FBA fees might be 4 to 5% higher. I'm very willing to pay that for what they do for me. But hey, hey, uh, less work. I am tired of packing tape. Okay. Yes. We have a, a quick question from Ann Jeanette. She wants to know how long you've been selling on Amazon. I've been on Amazon since 2004, but I didn't start doing FBA till 2010. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so I've been around a while, but I just kind of, I sold books on Amazon mainly. Isn't that what everybody starts out selling on Amazon books? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> As a, do they sell more than books? Who knew? Yeah. Um, yeah, I started out in 2004, about, 20, about 2010, the holiday season, I started selling Webkins. You know, I started on eBay on Beanie Babies. I started my FBA career with Webkins. So that was kind of interesting. Um, less work and happier customers, and happier customers are strictly because they get their stuff faster, and we love that. And uh, uh, there are two different, yes. Uh, what about coupons? Um, Laurentino wants to know, um, can, can I put discount coupons on my products? No, 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 no. Nope. Yep. <laughs> that will get your hand slapped very quickly. I am one of those rare people, Molly, that has actually had my account suspended and got it back. Okay. okay. And I don't tell that story to everybody, not because I'm embarrassed, um, but just because I don't want you to think you can, because you probably can't. It's really, really amazing. I had just enrolled in FBA. And I didn't realize that one of my automatic emails from my postage program that I was sending to my customers to send them the tracking number, in that email, I had put a link to my website. I didn't remember that. So I had just signed up for FBA. I had just sent in 10 big boxes of Webkins. I had my account rep at Amazon. And I get this email saying, you can't sell here anymore. <gasps> I was terrified. <laughs> so I called and I said, I, they said, because you're trying to solicit customers. And I, call, I said, I'm not trying to, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do this. And it turns out it was that automatic email. We traced it back and I apologized and apologized. But I really think the only reason I was able to get my account back was because I had an account rep, because I was, I had just sent all those boxes into FBA and they were really trying to ramp up FBA. So they, they forgave me. They, they gave me, they extended mercy to me. Mm -hmm. I have not heard of that happening a lot. Don't expect it, but it does happen. But I say that to explain to Lauren, was it was asking about the, the coupons? Don't yeah. even try. It. Yeah, and, don't uh, even try. It. We have another question in a similar vein. Um, Annette wants to know, how do you get sales on Amazon if you have a poor feedback rating? Oh, that's fine. Um, you're going to be competing a lot more on price until your feedback gets higher. Feedback is not as important on Amazon as it is on eBay. Um, eBay is uh, very, very feedback center. In fact, eBay is the one that invented feedback, so you would expect it to be very, very important to their culture. And please, I don't anybody take this as an anti-eBay presentation. I, eBay is a part of my heart. I'm going to eBay on location, yay. <laughs> I love eBay. But um, eBay invented feedback, so it's extremely important. It's embedded in the culture. On Amazon, remember I told you all those customers, they want to buy their stuff and get on with their lives. They don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. That means that you're going to be lucky if you get feedback from 4% of your eBay buyers. So if you have an Amazon feedback rating of four, you've probably sold 20 or 40 items. And everybody knows that. So it's not as important. Um, it will, like I said, it will cause you to compete more on price until your feedback numbers get up there. There is a service called Feedback 5. And it's just feedback5.com. And they have a free account and a paid account. Um, I would let, suggest you might try out the uh, free account. And what it does is it automatically emails your customers in about five days to, hey, I'm just checking to make sure you got your item. Is everything okay? You know, and gives them a link to leave feedback. And I've heard of people having success getting more feedback that way and getting it fixed up. That might help. I hope so is that, that, is that, as a follow-up question, is that, um, you mentioned account rep earlier, is that how, how you kind of establish one on Amazon? That is what I'm telling, I mean, it, it, when I get there, I tell you, don't sign up. If, you, if you're already on Amazon, but you haven't done FBA, always, always, always call in to set up your FBA account. And this is why. For the last three years, they have run programs, they call them refund programs, where they will actually refund your money for your inbound shipping up to like $1,200, okay? Now, it depends on, of course, how much you ship in. And there's no guarantee there'll be a program this year. But always call in always ask 
is there some kind of rebate program I can get in on? I have a very dear friend who shall remain nameless who was told no 12 times. On the 13th time, they approved her and she got her refund. <laughs> So my motto is it never hurts to ask. I w if I'm ready to sign up for FBA, I always encourage people to go into the, FB the Amazon seller help and push that button to have them call you and say, I'm thinking about signing up for FBA. Can someone help me? Okay. We good on questions for now? Yeah, we actually have a couple more coming in. Um, let's see. What about, so you okay. mentioned a free account. Does this mean so you can have multiple accounts on Amazon? No, 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 no. Um, you can have two accounts on Amazon, one, uh, one to buy and one to sell. There's really no need for that on Amazon. And if you try to open up another account, you can get yourself in trouble. So if you already have an Amazon account, um, then I would call in and tell them you want to add FBA to your account. The free account I was talking about is for the service Feedback5. That's feedbackfive.com. Okay, great. Thanks for, thanks for clarifying that. No problem. All right, moving on, grab me again. Two types of accounts. There is, there's uh, a sell your stuff account and a sell professionally account. Sell your stuff is when you're just getting started. You're not sure you're going to sell on Amazon. There are, there are no listing fees, but there's an extra 99 cent fee on everything you sell, okay? The sell professionally account is $39.99 a month. So, of course, if you're selling 40 items a month, you automatically need this. But there are a lot of other benefits for this professional account, okay? I, if you are going into this to be a business, I honestly see no reason to start as an individual account, okay? Now, I know some people that will tell you to start as an individual account, work up to your 40 sales a month, and then switch over. Honestly, I have seen so many people have trouble switching their accounts over because there are actually four different platforms on Amazon, and it causes issues, okay? So what I recommend is gather up all your inventory around your house, go garage sale shopping one weekend, get a nice pile of 50 or 100 items, then sign up for the pro account, send them all in at once, and get those sales started immediately. So that's a, that's a personal recommendation opinion. You can sign up for the individual plan, and you'll, you will pay that 99 cent fee on each sale. So strictly by the numbers, when you're selling 40 things a month is when you need this, okay? Um, you know, there, there's a strictly by the numbers. When you're selling, you know, 40 items a month, you might as well have the pro account. There are a lot of other benefits with the pro account. Number one is creating a page. I know I mentioned earlier that you, you create a page if your item's not in the catalog. You cannot create pages unless you're a pro account holder. So that's another reason to do that. Okay, here we go, Charlene. Here's the categories. I'm glad you reminded me. Um, you can sell a lot of stuff on Amazon. You can sell strange and wonderful things, but there are some things you cannot sell on Amazon. There are three types of categories, open, gated, and closed. Let's talk about the open categories. First of all, let's talk about why they even have these rules. Uh, Amazon has their rules for a reason. These rules are to go back to what we talked about in the very beginning. What's driving Amazon's success? Their incredible dedication to the buyer experience. That's where their rules come from. You may not like them. They may not seem fair, but it's their sandbox. And they, they're very clear about their rules. Here's our rules. If you are willing to abide by our rules, you're welcome to play in our sandbox. <laughs> they're right out there in front. There's nothing hidden. Um, so, you know, they have their rules. If you're not, if you can't handle them, if you don't like them, if you, you uh, just, you know, dia diametrically oppose some of their rules, then this may not be the marketplace for you. So the Amazon, Amazon is not eBay. Uh, this ain't eBay is a title of a popular blog post uh, that people have penned. If you repeatedly provide poor customer experience or break Amazon poli policies, you run the risk of having your selling account permanently banned. And this is the lecture I gave you earlier. They don't play around. Uh, the only way to get another Amazon account, and I, if you look, Skip McGrath actually came up with a, uh, a blog post about how to get a new eBay account and how to get a new Amazon account. The eBay instructions were one paragraph. The Amazon instructions took almost two pages. Okay. <laughs> and they involve getting a new IP address, moving across the country, things like that. So you're not going to get back on Amazon if they ban you. Hey, uh, hey Kat. Uh-huh. You mind if I interrupt you just one second? Absolutely. Well, so I was going to say, um, earlier we thought we'd leave the last 15 minutes for Q&A, but it sounds like folks are mostly asking questions as it comes up. So do you want to just keep going in that fashion? Just keep presenting and then sure. answering questions? 
Okay. Sure, as long as you promise to give me, feed me all their questions. <laughs> sure. Well, I have one for you right now. Perfect. Um, so Lauren wants to know, if I list my product in an FBA account and, it, and this product has a lower price, will it be listed at the top of the products list? Um, top of the product list, I think she means the buy box. Amazon has what's called the buy box, which is where a lot of sales come from. Because when you go to look at that product, people typically just buy that, push that buy button, and they buy from whoever's got the buy box. Um, the Amazon sellers, FBA sellers, are automatically um, entered into the featured merchant status. You must be a featured merchant, I'm using the air quotes here, to be able to be in the buy box. However, the actual... Um, uh, formula for winning the buy box is a closely guarded secret. Sound like best match to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Amazon will tell you certain things you can do to improve your standings to get that buy box, but they won't tell you every single thing. You know, so what they'll tell you is you have to be a featured merchant. Well, if you're an FBA merchant, you're automatically featured, although you can be a featured merchant without being FBA. Um, lowing, lower price counts a lot, but it's not totally the only factor. Uh, your feedback rating counts, and they are actually going to start looking at your customer metrics. And what that means is how many A to Z cases have been opened against you. An A to Z case is like a, an insurance claim that you, they said you didn't handle it, I had to go to Amazon to get it handled, so that's a claim. Uh, how many refunds you had. Um, typically the refunds I have are if I'm out of stock and I couldn't ship an item. So all of those things will count against you in the algorithm they use for the buy box. So I hope that helps. It's the best answer I can really give you for that. FBA status definitely helps. Lowest price definitely helps. But there's no formula that they'll release so you can know exactly how they figure that. Okay? Great. Thanks, Kat. All right. Don't be scared. You know, I told you all these horrible things about Amazon. <laughs> but as long as you read and follow the rules, describe your items accurately, pack your items carefully, you will be fine. Don't cry, sweetheart. Grandma's here. There you go. All right, back to the open categories. Uh, baby products, not baby clothing, but baby products. Beauty, you can read. I'm not going to read them to you, but there are a lot of open product, open categories. Open category means anyone can sell any product in that category. Here's an interesting exception. You notice toys and games are in there. Toys and games are big. Toys and games are huge for fourth quarter on eBay and Amazon. Amazon had an issue. The first year that they had FBA, they had a, a, a lot of merchants that were not FBA that were uh, listing products they didn't have. You know those hot toys like the Tickle Me Elmo and the Cabbage Patch doll and what's the most recent one, girls? You have to give me a modern one. But uh, the hot toy that everybody has to have, oh, the Leap Pad. Nobody could find the Leap Pads last year. So they had merchant fulfilled sellers listing these items on Amazon for outrageous prices, most of them, and then figuring, hey, if I sell it, I'll just go down to the store and get it. Well, they didn't have it in their, in their possession. So the customer bought it. The seller went out to try to find it and fill the order, couldn't do it, refunded the buyer. Buyer was not happy. Mm -hmm. Did not have toy under tree on Christmas. Bad Santa. Amazon thought, okay, we cannot have our customers doing this. What are we going to do? So now there's a rule. That as we get closer to fourth quarter, if you're an Amazon seller, you'll start getting more and more emails in your email box saying, we're shutting down toys, we're shutting down toys, we're shutting down toys. What that means is you have to have already been registered to sell in the toys category for a certain length of time. You have to have sold a certain number of toys. Notice I'm saying certain because the actual number varies. You have to have certain customer metrics in order to be allowed to sell in the fourth quarter in the toy category. How do you get around all that? Become an FBA seller. FBA sellers are automatically approved to sell in toys and games year round. Cool? Hey, Kat. Gated categories. Yes, ma'am. Um, Judy wants to know if you have any advice on how to price items. Oh. Well, hmm, I like to make money, so I price them high. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Um, it really, it's definitely one of those it depends items, Judy. Uh, I look at the Amazon page and I want to be like, if, if they're, if it's a really, really good rank, like it's a real fast seller, I want to be the fifth lowest. Notice I did not say I want to be the lowest. I want to be the fifth lowest. If it's a higher rank selling item, like in the 10,000s, 20,000s, 50,000s, I want to be the third price up. 
okay? I'm not interested in chasing the next sale. I want to get the sale that's going to make me the most margin, the most profit. So if there's um, a doll for sale and there are merchant sellers for 25 and I look at that doll and there's another uh, Amazon FBA seller selling it for 50 and I have two merchants selling it at 25 and she's selling it at 50, I'm going to price mine at 36 okay? So I'm going to be right in the middle of the pack. Um, I am a definite opponent of the race to the bottom pricing. And that's where I price my doll at 36 and you come in, Judy, and price yours at $35.99. And then Molly comes in and prices hers at $35.98. And so I go down to $35.97 and you see where this is leading, right? <laughs> Into the gutter, somebody getting a doll for $3 and all of us being unhappy. So I don't recommend that model at all. Um, I want to be within the first five prices on that page because usually the product page will show the top five. I know that there are different business models. I know a lot of people, I have one friend who runs his repricer every two hours because he sells commodity books and if he's not in the buy box, he doesn't sell. So for his business model, it's much more important for him to be the lowest or the next lowest. For my business model, it's not. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy being the third or the fifth. So that was a long-winded explanation. I'm sorry. I hope that helps somebody. That was great. That was really helpful. All I right. Found that very interesting. <laughs> Good. Well, you know, you can always chase the next sale, but why? You know, I'd rather have the extra $5. Thank you. All right. Gated categories. These categories require approval from Amazon. Some of them are easier to get into than others. I have heard recently of three people being approved in the jewelry category. So evidently they're looking for more jewelries. Um, the toys and games are on here as holiday, as I said, but that doesn't apply if you're FBA. Um, one thing that I have heard people having a lot of trouble getting into is the clothing category and the automotive category. So if those are your main product categories, this may not be the market for you, or you may have to set up a presence there and slowly work your way in. Again, my motto, if it never hurts to ask, I just keep asking and asking and asking. Um, and I did hear of somebody last, two weeks ago, that was approved for clothing that had been trying to get in for three or four months. A couple of hints in that area. If you're trying to get approved in a category that they're really got the gates closed on and they're, they're being careful, what Amazon wants is the biggest catalog out there, okay? So if you've got a line of clothing that nobody else has or a line of automotive parts that nobody else has, tell them that. Look what I'm going to bring to your marketplace. Don't approach it as, please, I'm a good person. Let me sell clothes on Amazon. Approach it as, I have this wonderful line of unique artsy fartsy clothing that you don't have on your site and I'd be happy to sell them there if you'd let me. Okay? Difference. And never give up. Never give up. But they can only say no so many times, trust me. <laughs> okay. Limited categories are a little bit of a cross, uh, cross there. The category is open. You can list things in the electronics category. You can list in the software category, all these others, but certain products require approval. This is the hard one because there's no way to tell until you go to sell your item. So if you're out in the field scouting and you come across a great deal in photo accessories, your best bet is to pull that up on your phone, the actual page, and see if there's a sell yours button there. <laughs> because you may get, keep your receipts because you may get home and that may be one particular camera that you have to be approved to sell. Okay? So just in these categories, be a little bit careful when you're buying items in these categories to resell. These items, you cannot sell used. People think that Amazon is all new items. It's not. There are lots of used, refurbished, like new. You know, think of all the, the different grades in books. Acceptable, good, very good. Lots of categories you can sell used items in, not these ones. No used items in beauty. I'm really glad about this one. I, I don't know how you feel about it, Molly, but I'm not a fan of used lipstick. So, yeah, I'm glad about this one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no used my clothing, accessories, and luggage. No used jewelry. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I'd, uh, no, I don't think I'd go for that, even if I was safe in five bucks. <laughs> uh, no used shoes. No used toys and games. No used watches. Now, here's the exception. You cannot sell a used toy, but you can sell a collectible toy. Now, what in the world is the difference, you ask? <laughs> I don't think Amazon even knows. But the technical definition is if the item is no longer being produced, it is a collectible. Now, here's something interesting. I make a lot of money selling uh, collectible games on Amazon. I didn't know that people that collect games, like they collect aggravation, they don't just want 
the aggravation game. They're like a book collector. They want every edition of the aggravation game. So they want the 25th anniversary aggravation game. They want the Olympics version of Monopoly, okay? They want the uh, NASCAR version of Monopoly. So most of these games you can pick up for a few dollars and you can sell them for quite a bit, 75, 100 and more. Uh, they're collectible. Same thing with toys. Uh, you can't sell a used Fisher Price toy, but if it's not in production anymore, and if it hasn't been recalled, of course, you can sell a collectible Fisher Price toy. Okay? Is that as clear as mud, I hope? <laughs> and these are the closed categories. These are the ones that are really, really hard to get into. And clothing, again, is up here. Adult toys, guns, gift cards, tobacco, and alcohol. So if you're really into any of these, you might have to look for a different warehouse, a different uh, marketplace. Hey everyone, Why does it, I just want to, yeah. Kat, I want to let you know and let everybody else know that there's about five minutes left. So if you have any last minute questions you want to ask um, that you want Kat to address, uh, you can type them in now and we'll try to get a couple of them answered. And Kat, if you want and to prioritize any of the last things you want to say, that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Let me go through real quick. And also, um, Molly and I talked earlier, if there's questions we can't get to, she's going to send them to me in an email and I'll publish them as a PDF to go along with the replay. So if you have questions, go ahead and go in there. I'm really sorry I didn't get to this. I'm going to have to tie myself better. Sourcing products for FBA is the easiest part of the business. I know you don't believe this, but it is true. Inventory is everywhere. Uh, Amazon has a free app. If you want to get started today, just to get an idea, there's a free app. It's for Android and Apple called Price Check by Amazon. You can download that on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device now. Scan a bunch of barcodes and, and around your house, on your bookshelf, in your CDs, your DVDs. See what they're selling for on Amazon. Um, inventory is easy. I buy a lot of inventory at thrift stores, estates, and yard sales. Uh, you wouldn't believe what people put out there. I bought a set of door hinges, Molly. I didn't even know what they were, but they were new in a box and they had a barcode, right? So I scanned them. Mm -hmm. I asked, and they scanned up for like 60, 70 bucks. And so I was, wow. I asked the guy, how much do you want for these? And he said, oh, a dollar a piece. I'm $2 a piece. And I said, um, how about a dollar a piece? Because <laughs> I always bargain. Sure. So I give him $2. I bring the babies home. I, I package them up, send them off to FBA. One sold for 79, one sold for 78. They were door opening things, whatever. What so about, I'll kind of, what about yeah. um what about gold or silver bullion coins? What about do you have any experience Ooh. with that? I have no experience with that. I'm guessing that would be a restricted category in Amazon, but I'm going to put that down. I'll put that in the Q and A, and I will go see what Amazon sells about that. That's great. very curious. Thanks. I hadn't thought about that. Retail arbitrage. Chris Green has a great book out there. It's available on Kindle. Uh, next Monday it will be free if you haven't got your copy of Retail Arbitrage. Online arbitrage, there's a thing called the Amazon browser bar that will show you exactly what the product you're looking at sells for on Amazon. It's a free download, the Amazon browser bar. And of course, wholesale. About 60% of my FBA is now wholesale. So if you're ready to get started, three easy steps. Go sign up. Remember to call in, buy your stuff, and ship it in there. All this other stuff we've gone over before. Uh, to sign up, there's the link. Make sure you call. Go to that link and then call them. Read. If you're not going to go for any further education, read about the Amazon rules and read them again and again, okay? This ain't eBay. Amazon's fees are roughly 25 to 30 percent. That's including every single fee. The shipping in, the shipping cost, the pull pack and ship fee, the storage fee, the long-term storage fee, all of it. If you figure 25 to 30 percent for your fees, you're good, okay? That may seem high to you, but go add up your, your eBay bill and your PayPal fees and see how close you are to 25%, you'll be surprised. Get familiar with Amazon Seller Central. Their Seller Central is the same as the eBay Selling Manager. Seller Central is where you go to handle your Amazon business. Free resources. I do a talk show uh, and podcast on TalkShoe every Monday and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Go to TalkShoe.com, look for FBA Radio, or the call number is 112441. There's an FBA Radio Facebook group with over, I think, 1,100 members now. And that's all free information. They're happy to answer questions. Uh, Bob Willie, a friend of mine, runs the FBA forum on Yahoo groups. And there's about, I think, 2,000 members there already. Um, you can find me. I love, As you can tell, I love to talk about FBA. Uh, in fact, I just published my first book on sales tax for FBA sellers. So look me up. If you want further training, I found one course I can actually recommend. It's called the Proven Amazon Course. It's done by Jim Cockrum. This is my link. If you want it, it's uh, $300. It's worth every penny. You don't have to have it, but if you are nervous and you want further training, this is where I'd recommend you go. Phew, that was fast. 
That was one minute to spare. That was the most remarkable wrap up I think I've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I really love talking FBA. So guys, send in your questions. If I didn't get to them, please, I still want to hear them. And uh, Molly assured me she'll send them to me in email. I'll get those out in the next couple of days so that I'll have all the answers that I can find for the bullion and any other questions you send in. And I would love to hear from you on the FBA radio group and I'll turn it back over to Molly now. Yeah, well, great. Thank you all for attending today. And, And Kat, thank you so much for joining us. I have to tell you that about half the questions I received weren't actually questions. They were just comments about how great a teacher you are and <laughs> how much oh, they've been cool. doing what you've been telling us. And, and yeah, everyone, it seems like there's a lot of questions you guys have about this. So again, send them, keep posting them in the questions and we'll, we'll get them to Kat and she'll hopefully get those answered. And, um, you know, FBA is a great topic. Amazon's a great topic. And I wanted to let you know that we have a couple more webinars planned um, with s- similar topics. Um, so you can see here on this slide, um, the next one is August 15th, and, and it's all about Amazon sellers and financial tips and tricks and how to manage your finances being an Amazon seller. And then the next one is September 19th. Um, keep Uncle Uncle Sam out of your pocket. Tax tips for Amazon sellers will help you uh, deal with that tax time headache. So again, everyone, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure from Molly and Outright, Molly and Laura here at Outright. And again, thank you, Kat, and we hope you all have a great week.